on the foothills of Mount Kilimanjaro. This is the story, a story you find throughout Africa. There was once a time when the blue sky was invisible, when the whole world was covered with mist, when you could not see the sun as it is now, you only saw it as a, a, a splash of white light moving slowly across the sky. At that time, there was an eternal drizzle every day of the year. At that time, people could not see the stars. People only saw the trees growing, trees which were very, very big. There was no desert at that time, only jungle everywhere where you went. At that time, say, people were what we call in Zulu, Ngubibli. A human being was both male and female in one body. And out of the sky, one day, came terrible objects. They were like gigantic bows made of huge gleaming gold. They were shaped like bows without strings, and they were bigger than the biggest mountains. They came out of the sky bringing great noise, black smoke, and fire with them. And out of those huge objects came them. At that time, say, human beings could not speak. We had no gift of language at that time. And people had, however, great mental power. A man would go into the bush and using the power of his mind actually call out an animal which he wanted to hunt and kill for his children. And the animal would appear and kneel down before the man and the man would kill the animal and take it home. But when the Chitawuli arrived in Africa, they told our people that they were gods and that they were going to give us human beings great gifts on one condition. We had to worship them and accept them as our creators. Some told our people that they were our elder brothers and that this earth had produced them generations ago. And they said they had come back to the green womb of their mother and that they were going to make us into gods. What they did, they created a very strange pair of caves in the land. They dug two caves. In one cave was a green light, in another cave was a red light. And they drove human beings into these caves. And each human being had to choose which cave the human being wanted to go into. And those who went into the green cave came out as women. And those who went into the red cave came out as men. And then the talkers, the Chitauri, told our people that now they were perfect. But the moment the first men saw the first women, a terrible row erupted. The women hated the men because they looked between their legs 
and they saw what they thought were snakes dangling between the legs of the men. And the men hated the women because they looked on their chests and they saw these big things. What they were, they did not know. And then the Chitauri laughed. It was to them a very, very big joke. And then the Chitauri said, if you serve us, you wretched little human beings, we are going to make you into gods. And the human beings agreed to serve the Chitauri. And the Chitauri gave human beings a second gift, the gift of language. People started talking with their tongues where they had talked with their minds before. And there was a big rubbish starting again because this man did not know the language of that man. And when this man greeted that man, this man thought that he was being insulted and saw a lot of murder and culpable homicide started taking place all over the world. When our people were given language, they found to their horror that they had lost much of their mental powers. They had paid a terrible price. But the Chitauri were now the masters of human beings. They made them the, the human beings to go into holes in the ground and to mine metal, gold, copper, tin, all kinds of metal the Chitauri forced our people to mine. And the people were very unhappy because they couldn't, they couldn't, uh, 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 they couldn't cope with the new sexual differences which were there now between men and women. And then, from amongst the the the, the Chitauri, came a very good female Chitauri. Her name was Mai Nzarantwari Samahong. Mai Nzarantwari Samahong was the senior wife of the terrible chief of the Chitauri, Umbaba Gorontwari Samahong. She was sorry for human beings, this great reptile lady. She said to the poor people, Ow, you are unhappy. And the people said, Yes, great one. We go into the holes every day. We dig the stones and we bring it to the gods. But we are not happy. And my Zarantwari scratched her scaly chin and began to think and to think she was terribly ugly. Her eyes were awful, like lights in the darkness. But she had mercy in her heart. And she taught the men and the women how to make love. And she said, look, we, we divided you into males and females. Now this action is going to bring you together. Ah, but it did not, because anyone who receives a gift from the Ntwari, the children of the python, is always in trouble. What happened was that when one guy slept with his wife, he didn't find her much, so he went to steal another guy's wife, and there was a brick, a big remorse, as we say in African, starting. So men started stealing each other's wives, and each other's girlfriends, and women started stealing each other's husbands, and there was a big nonsense in the land. And King Umbaba, the terrible uh, lord of the Ntwari, the, the reptile people, said, look what you done, you stupid old woman. Now these people, they are, they are making such a noise. Listen to all that screaming in the bush. They are busy making love there and our gold is not being dug and you are responsible for this. 
Und Savantua report and bought and bought and bought, and then she got a plan, and she said, I will make them stop. When they make love to each other, the female is going to get pregnant. And when she is pregnant, the male is going to leave her alone, and that noise in the bush will not be so disturbing to you, my lord. And Umbaba said, you had better. There is no production here. And so all the women in the world was pregnant, and Umbaba was furious with his wife. And so it went on and on until one day Mzavantwari activated a black hero called Mweru. And Mweru challenged the great chief of the serpent people to a fight. And he cut off the royal pennies of the king of the snake people. And that caused a big war. Mweru ran away. But Umbaba, the terrible chief of the people, caught him and arrested him and brought him to his village. And there, the great chief Korontwari Umbaba said, look, you cut off my thing and I have replaced it with one made of gold and I can't make love to my wife anymore. You think too much, you wretched little human being. Now, Umbaba had a terrible nail in one of his hands, a claw. And with this claw, he drove the claw into poor Mweru's nostril, making a terrible hole into his brain. And he started drinking Mweru's brain, and then he threw away the corpse. To this day, sir, we believe that the people, the Chitauri people, they eat human brains. And strangely enough, scientists have found skulls where the human brain has been removed and eaten by someone or something. Well, the, um, the hearing you speak here, um, so many things uh, come to mind. First of all, you're saying that telepathy was the key form of communication yeah. for the Chittahuli, the reptilians came. Yes, sir. And um, it, I guess it's like a muscle. When you use it, it gets more sensitive and more powerful. So the more you use your telepathy, the more powerful your mind got. And then when language came, it almost brought us into this three-dimensional world and disconnected us from that mind power that we yeah. had before. Yes, sir. And it's also interesting that the, the, the story that you talk about, the language being given, and then the different languages being given. And of course, that turns up in the uh, uh, Old Testament, in the Bible. It turns up in stories all over the world about the fact that we were divided by language so we couldn't communicate. And as someone who publishes books, I know today how difficult it is to communicate through books when you've got endless different languages. So 